Hi guys, this is Krista from Mosaic Party and Event Design and today I have some blooms by Mosaic for you. So a couple of days ago here in Canada was Remembrance Day and Remembrance Day is a day that we honor and support our veterans from past wars and all that they do to help with our freedom. And we all wear red poppies to, to support and honor those efforts and those that we have lost. So I thought it fitting that I would do some red poppies this week for you and show you how I'm building them. Now, some of the steps are going to be pre-done and I'll make sure I'll put links to past videos that help talk about how to do some of the, the coloring and things that we're not going to do today. But let's get started. The supplies that you're going to need are coffee filters and I would suggest the cone shaped coffee filters for this particular project but if you only have the basket ones uh, feel free to use those. I'll talk about an example as to how the coloring would affect the two different types of paper and filters in a moment but um, I want to talk about size first. This is a number four coffee filter size which means it's good for an 8 to 12 cup coffee pot. This one is a number two size, which is good for a four to six coffee pot. So they're much smaller. This is the size I'm using today, the number two. Um, it gives me the, the right size of petals without any extra waste, but it doesn't matter which size you do. You'll want to make sure that you have them pre-colored. So today I'm working with a black and a nice poppy red. I will put a link to how I colored these and tips and tricks for it in the video description. It will be from my first part of my red rose tutorial and that coloring technique is exactly what you're going to want for colors like this because you don't want the color to rub off with the moisture of your hand or any humidity in the air. So there is some additives that I add into the coloring with my food coloring to make sure that I get a nice deep dark color that doesn't bleed into funny colors as well as make sure that it uh, doesn't rub off later. You will also need a floral wire. I'm using an 18 gauge. You'll need some scissors, some tacky glue, and you'll need some floral tape. I'm using a green here, but I'm also using another color today. I'm using a sort of a really deep black brown. And what I've used this for is to create um, almost like a, a cord, a waxed cord. Also probably about 20 gauge if you're going to go out and just buy sort of a waxed um, cord of some sort from the craft store. And I'll show you how I make that in a moment. You'll also need probably a dish for your glue and you may find a paintbrush handy for your glue as well. Another thing I'm going to talk about is how to make a couple of different centers. So one way is going to be with a small little foam ball. This is a three quarter inch foam ball. If you can find half an inch it would probably be better. And another way is with some uh, tissue paper or some sort of soft paper like a paper towel. All right, so let's get building. I'm just going to set some of this uh, stuff aside here. Okay, so. First things first is you have to prep your, your wire and um, you may find that this is a little long to work with. It depends on your workstation. I'm going to have a little bit of problems here today, but that's okay. And all I'm doing is creating a bend, sorry for the noise, a bend in the top. I'm going to take a pair of pliers and just kind of crimp that down. I'm just going to do that off screen because of the angle. You ever have one of those days where your fingers just don't want to work? Today's one of those days for me. 
<laughs> All right, so I'm just going to crimp a bend in there. Now, there's two ways that we can make the centers. Uh, this one is a little bit smaller, but you can make it as big as you want or as small as you want, and it's with the paper towel. And I'll show you how to do that. But I'm going to talk about this one as well. So you can see that this one's more perfected. It's a, a perfect center. Um, I feel like it's a little too big for this particular uh, style or breed, I guess a poppy. I don't know that that's the right word. But um, that's with a floral or a foam ball. And like I said before, this is a three quarter inch, a half an inch would work better and I'd probably like it a lot better in my poppy. All I would do to build this center is um, pop this in with a little bit of glue and then continue on with the next steps that I'm going to do in the other way. The way I'm going to show you today is with going to be a little bit of paper towel or tissue paper would work really well as well. I'm also going to discuss um, coloring on a basket coffee filter here for a moment because I'm going to use this green for my center and you can see the the green in there this is a basket coffee filter that used to have the crimson and folds in it after coloring and you can see that coloring with food coloring on a basket coffee filter is much more translucent translucent because the paper is so much thinner and it's a little bit of a different makeup and it's way more saturated and and fibrous and thick in the cone shaped coffee filters but I quite often when I have leftover green or colors from doing leaves and whatnot I'll pre-do a bunch of these and let them set to dry so that I have some tissue type paper you could also use tissue paper for this project but I need this for my center um, because of how thin it is. It works really nicely. So I'm just going to get a little bit of glue going here on my dish. I always keep my glue in a little dish upside down so it's ready to pour. Okay, and what we want to do is create a soft sort of ball on the end of here for your your center so I'm just going to dip this in a little bit of glue just to get it started and I'm just going to start wrapping it around and bunching it up super easy no right or wrong you just want a general shape and some softness in there and I always take a little bit of extra glue sort of in the little crimson folds, you are gonna get messy and sticky. So I do forewarn you about that. And just kind of tack it down almost like a paper mache. You wanna take a little bit of your floral wire, or sorry, floral tape, and just sort of anchor a bit of that down. Now this is tricky because of the length of my wire here in my workstation. So I'm going to try and stay on camera for you. All right. So you've got that. And like I said, you could use that foam ball if you wanted to. But I like sort of the more natural organic way of this. Now I'm going to take my um, sort of thinner, lighter green paper uh, or tissue, whatever you want to use, whatever is handy for you. And I'm just going to create myself a nice sort of piece. And this is probably too much. But you're just going to cover this and smooth it out and anchor it down. And the reason why I want to use such a thin paper or a tissuey type of paper, such as the basket coffee filters, is because you can really kind of work out some of those creases that you would get from a really thick paper that wouldn't kind of work themselves out so and moisture will help with that so the moisture from the glue will tack it down but it'll also help you sort of mold it into the the smoother shape that you want and it doesn't have to be perfect 
So just put it on. And then I'm going to work it around my center. Sorry, around the base of my wire. And using your finger, just kind of press out any of those creases and kind of get the shape that you want before everything dries up. Now we're going to be adding something to this, um, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to use a little bit of glue on the ends here instead of more floral tape. Just kind of get that all. This is where your cord is going to come in handy. So to make this cord, if you want to make it, you're just going to take some floral tape a nice length of it and you're going to stretch and activate all that sort of glue and waxiness in it and you're just going to start twisting and you just keep twisting and twisting and twisting and you work your way down you fold and twist and fold and twist and get it really nice and tight I do this while I watch movies uh, it gives my fingers something to do but you can see eventually you'll have a length of cord what we're going to do with this, poppies have this sort of um, really interesting center stamen piece. And if you look at a botanical chart, you'll really see that it's, it's quite intricate and um, has texture and bumps and ridges. But we're going to take this cord and I'm just going to hold it down with my thumb. And I'm going to pull it down to the other side. And because you're using a softer tissue, it is going to kind of mold into it a bit. And that's okay. And I'm just using my finger on the other side to hold it. And then I'm going to wrap the cord around itself just to anchor everything in. And then I'm going to do that. I'm going to find the other spot and come across. And I'm using my finger every time to hold it. My finger and my thumb. And I'm going to find the in-between and wrap it across again. And then again. Don't fuss with it too, too much now. You want to get it anchored. Oops, see, I'm already fussing and letting go. You want to get it anchored and secured before you try and straighten out too many of your lines. And I'm going to just anchor that down now with some floral tape. I wonder how many times I can say anchor. <laughs> Oops. Like I said, today's just one of those days my fingers don't want to work. My speaking is not as clear, so I do apologize. All right, so it doesn't look pretty. And you can see any areas that you need to fix. Don't worry about areas like that because what we're going to do is we're going to come right up to about here, sort of three quarters, quarters of the way up um, with floral tape. And we want to create a nice clean sort of line right around that that design now you'll find the way that works best for you for this it's one of those things that you just have to do and you can see any areas that you want to fix here you can kind of press it down you can add a little bit of glue to it once you have it in place and the glue will dry clear but it just will help lock it in for you and seal it. All right, so that's your center. And we need to make sort of the eyelash fringe for around it. We're going to do this two ways. I have two tones in here, believe it or not. I have the black and then just little hints of sort of the wispy same color green. And that's just to add a little depth and dimension into it. So I'm just going to set that aside. We're going to take 
more of your tissue or your coffee filter from the light green that you used in the center. I'm just going to cut myself out a nice rectangular shape. Doesn't need to be perfect. Fold it in half and we're going to do some fringing. So that's my folded side on the bottom. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to rest them against my finger. And to get a really fine fringe, the trick is to move the paper, not the scissors, other than to open and close them. Don't move your scissors inwards. And this just takes practice. And all I'm doing is resting against my finger on the back. So no risk of really cutting myself. And by just barely moving my thumb and my finger, I'm getting a really nice fringe. And don't worry about all the little fallen guys. When you get to the end and it's hard to hold, I just flip it over and come back from the other side. If you see any that you've left that are thicker, just go in and cut them. And then we have a really fine fringe. Now, because we folded it in half, we have two lengths. I'm just going to cut them in half. There we go. And then we're going to do the same with our black. And all I'm going to do is just cut off a piece. I'm going to square it up a little bit better. Oops. Not totally square, but that's okay. I'll work it out here when I fold it. And because the coffee filter is doubled, I'm just going to do this. And this is where I can kind of get a better, a better shape. And again, I'm going to just start fringing as fine as you can. You really want those sort of eyelash stamen pieces to just be fluffy and frilly and move. Freely, just flip it over. Again, I should have two pieces, oh, sorry, one piece that I need to cut into two pieces is what I meant. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to glue my black ones on first. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the bottom edge here. You're going to make sure that you glue right around there. You want some of that edge to show um, when it's all open so that you get that clean sort of design. And like I said, look at um, a deconstructed poppy or some botanical charts and you'll be really amazed at the intricacy of how these centers and stamen grow. They're, they're quite interesting. All right, I'm just going to tack that down. I'm going to open it up in a moment here once I get the other layer on. You really want a lot of the black, sort of to make it full. I'm going to just press it down and start opening up a bit. And you'll just, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but you can just kind of see the structure and the line of that green in there, which just adds to it. Now I'll probably only use one of these. We'll see. This is just to add a little bit of extra dimension in the coloring. And you're going to add this on the outside. Yeah, I'm only going to add one. Sometimes you need to apply things 
before you know how many you're going to need. It's the same with petals. I never know how many petals I'm really going to use. And then just sort of integrate them together. Hmm. We have our center. All right. So for the petals, you will need two to three coffee filters. We're going to do three. Um, most poppies, you could have just four or five petals on. And I'm going to fold to just before that crimp line. I'm going to stack all three together. And just fold it in half right up to just before the crimp line. Now the, the coffee filters are a perfect shape for the petals of a poppy because they're almost like a, a long, wide oval petal and then just a little bit on the bottom to, to attach. So you don't need a template, especially if you're using the number two coffee filter. All you need to do is follow the natural curve and then come in And then I'm just going to come in so you can see I created almost like that half oval. And then I'm just going to come in and cut the bottom off so we have something to attach. And that's it. So we cut three coffee filters, which means that we're going to have six petals, which you can tear apart. And then I'm going to just fold accordion fold and crimp and press them and then I'm going to twist. Poppies have this really crepey crinkled leaf in real life so we want to mimic that which is great because it's very forgiving. And when you open it up and gently because you don't want to take out too many of those creases just kind of cup and shape it with your fingers and you have a poppy leaf. So I'm going to quickly do that with the rest of them. If I had been smart, I would have had this step pre-done. But it is not a smart day. So hopefully we don't run out of time on the video filming here. My phone camera only allows so much storage, so. Now, what I haven't done with these poppies is created leaves just yet. Um, I was actually just going to originally make them into little pins. So I didn't know if I wanted leaves, but poppy leaves, you can look them up. They're really sort of lacy and delicate. And you could probably follow some of my other leaf tutorials with gluing two pieces together, pre-colored paper putting a wire in between, and then cutting out the shape of your leaf. Probably be the best option for getting a bendable, pliable leaf that is strong enough, especially with such a lacy, a lacy delicate leaf that like poppies have. Okay. So we have our petals, we have five. I don't think I'm gonna use all six. And I'm just going to get a little more glue going here because this is starting to get dry. I try and only ever use a little bit of glue at a time. I find it, it's less waste. And I'm just going to glue the bottom of my petals. Don't worry about any of the non-colored part because that's going to be covered anyways. And you're going to glue so that your petals come up fully around your center, but also you want to make sure that they're attached above any of the 
construction you have because when the petals open you don't want to see any of that construction on the inside and with that glue being tacky and damp you will have some time to shape and mold it I'm actually just going to fold this up because it's getting in my way all right so you want to do one side and then you want to come around wrap it around and go opposite that that first petal Check your height, readjust as you need to. And all I'm doing is just gluing it down with my fingers and I'll worry about floral tape after. Okay, so now you wanna come in. If you have the two opposite each other, you wanna go in between those. Again, on the other side. between and on the other side. Now, you could leave it there. You could tape this off and that would be a suitable poppy. Poppies really do not have that many petals. But I'm going to come in. I just want a little bit more fullness. I'm thinking I might make these into a little bit of a, an arrangement for next year. And I'm probably gonna use my sixth one. It all depends on how your petals sit. They sit differently every time. Because it's not a perfected art of template, you just kinda really gotta work with it. There you go. So I'm just gonna quickly floral tape that down. And there's no uh, sepals on a poppy. It's just a clean bottom edge, um, which um, is kind of unfortunate in, for the paper flower world because I find that when you have those extra little greens and stuff, it sort of hides the construction and softens it a bit. And there you go. You would just finish off your stem the way you want to. If you wanted to make it thicker, you could put tubing around it or um, whatever you use, a straw, something like that, and then wrap that in floral tape. Just open it up and it's nice and simple. You have a beautiful poppy and you can just work out any little extra crinks and creases in there. That's how to make a red Remembrance Day poppy. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Happy crafting, and I look forward to your comments. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will be posting more videos soon, probably of my poinsettias. Thank you.